Hello guys and welcome. My name is Sarun. This week's video, we are going to be talking about the combustion process in a rotary engine. Yes, in the last week video or a before video of the before one. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, it will be in the links in the description or somewhere here. So in before video, I have been explaining about the combustion process in an engine. Internal combustion engine which is driven by pistons. A piston driven car. But in this week's video, I'm going to be explaining something different. There are different types of uh, internal combustion engine itself. And there are two types, especially um, this in the cars which are particularly used is only rotary and piston. So in this week's video, we are going to be talking about the combustion process in a rotary engine and talking about this advantages, disadvantages, why people stop using it right now. So let's get into it. This week's video, in the end, I will explain how much even I went into the progress. So to see more videos of mine and uh, to make me uh, go even more further, like building cars like this, I'm starting to build the race car build and many more things like this. So I would request you guys to consider subscribing to my channel, and like this video and share this channel to everyone. Please tell them also to subscribe and that's all I'm asking you guys, okay? I'm gonna do some crazy stuff and amazing things to this channel. That's all I'm asking, this subscription is free. You don't want to pay anything, okay guys? So just please consider subscribing to my channel and let's get into this video. So combustion process in a rotary engine. A rotary engine is also a type of combustion engine of an ICE. It's a family of a combustion engine. So this was used long before by Mazda. They were the only mass producer who used this rotary engine. So rotary engine was invented by Felix Wankel. He was a German engineer. He invented between late 1950s to early 1960s. So here I'm taking a red marker to explain this or maybe I'll just take the green to explain much more better. So if you can see the green color thing, it's a triangular shape. Yes, triangle has three sides. Don't forget that. Okay. So it's not a quadrilateral. So a triangle is given right over here. This triangle, this obsessed triangle, which is ovalish and you know, a little bit more those type of thing. That is this one guys. That's the rotor itself. It's the it's the triangular thing, which is the rotor, and it's not piston. Pistons are circular and they have connecting rods and many more things. Leave that one. So this is the rotor which creates the power, which creates the power. See, this only one creates the power. That's it. Then, if you move on, the main thing which is uh, we want to talk about is many people when they create something like invent something, they take time to uh, like uh, publish it, something like that. Okay, so when Felix Wankel invented this type of engine, he got great success, uh, bad news, and something more like that. We'll talk about the bad news, but wait. So, if you can see, just like I said before, that's the thing which you want to know right over here. And one more thing we want to talk is I didn't draw it properly, but it will be uh, equal, okay? So, the center to the top part, it will be equal with the eccentric drive shaft, it's E shaft also, but we'll get into that video. So that's it for this one guys. So first thing I want to say is that Mazda was a mass producer and it's been a long time. They've been producing this type of engines for a long time in their vehicles. Because this is the thing which made Mazda unique and this is the thing which made Mazda more better. Like uh, we created love for Mazda. Why? Now I'll explain. So Mazda started using rotary engines in their cars since 1961 and till that Mazda had a great success from uh, using rotary engines and it was nice. Felix was happy and then came the bad news and we will talk about the bad news and let's continue with it. For, it's been a great success for Mazda and rotary engine also. So it was famous and many people loved it and created love and affection for the rotary and Mazda brand. So it was great and they had a great success from it. Now let's talk about the advantages. And before talking about the advantages, this also implies the four stroke. Yes, normal car, like normal cars which we use right now, the mass uh, daily drivers, like the daily cars they use, piston driven engines. That's the thing which we use mostly than rotors. Because uh, the, com uh, the, the ratio of uh, piston driven cars to the rotary for the world population. So it's less if you see, but still what you want to know is that normal cars, they have four stroke, same thing in follows it, the four stroke car intake, which is letting the air in or like getting the air inside the engine itself. And then which is the compression, mixing the air and fuel and the third stage, which is the ignition or the combustion itself, whatever you want to tell. And then the fourth one is the exhaust or letting out the exhaust gas. That's it. Same thing a rotor does. And let's talk about the, how does it do it? First we'll talk, how is the process happening? And then let's talk about the advantages, disadvantages. Let's move on. So guys, oh, if you see a uh, triangle has three sides, we know that. So I'm going to talk about the three sides, which I'm saying, like, let's mark this one is one and this is uh, two and this is three. So first, before showing this, I cannot uh, make an animation with this one itself, like moving, it's hard. So guys, here's a video. I'm moving the side. 
so i move this side and see here this is a video so this is the intake process one then the then the compression the ignition and then the exhaust if you can see the video you can see that so yeah so if you can see what the thing happens here let's say the step number no the step number one when it touches this area or reaches this point of the area what happens is that it it's been programmed controlled okay it's been electronically controlled that or it doesn't need to be electronic control sometimes it's mechanical so this triangle shape that's the rotor and these sides act like a barrier for some times so what happens is that uh, sometimes it's me uh, mechanically controlled uh, sometimes it's mechanically controlled sometimes electronic controlled by throttle bodies itself but now let's talk about mechanical throttle body i hope you all know but some people don't know what uh, how it's mechanically done so what happens is that the rotor before it starts right over here the tip number one let's say it's at this position and then what happens is that when the tip number one from this point and it moves on what happens you can see this video right over here yes the tip number one moves from this point to this point during that motion what happens is that it's pulling the air or like a syringe when you pull it it's uh, it's pulling the air that's all okay so when it pulls the air that means it's all mixed and sometimes it's directly injected or it's indirectly injected what i mean injected is the form of fuel so if you can see this is a direct injection so when the air is being taken in to the engine the fuel squirts inside that's it but sometimes it's mixed right over here before uh, entering the engine itself the air and fuel are mixed but sometimes it's direct so that's it for you, you want to know like uh, whether it's direct or indirect that's how you can say this is direct and these are some different don't think this is and this is same okay please don't forget that after when it uh, pulls in almost everything as much as possible then the port number like the then the point number three closes that area and closes fully so that that means no more air has been relieved or getting in so the next process see this video so hope you saw that one so if you can see in that part of the video alone if you see that it's been closed and it's like compresses when the triangulated rotor when it moves keeps on moving in one direction it moves in one direction don't forget that so when it moves in one direction which is clockwise most of the time it's clockwise yeah so if it moves in this direction if you see this part of the area alone is like in depth it's like moving in and then it's closing out so this i didn't get it properly but here's a photo of a proper uh, sided uh wankel rotary engine so that's why guys if you can see when it what happens is that the space is in depth so when the rotor spins it reduces the space or the area has been reduced so what happens it eventually reduces to compression and then the third process which is the combustion or ignition so that little space right over here let's say in the, okay for example i'm marking it red because combustion fire so yeah if you can see this is perfect that's why i drew in this stage alone so if you can see when after this part of this thing what happens is that there is only very little space and the two spark plugs ignite you know air and fuel together eventually create fire if there is a spark same thing and why there is two spark plugs is that the amount of air fuel present in and the amount of space to create the ignition process it's so slow that the flames are in equally spread so that's why there are two spark plugs to ignite the fuel, fuel and air mixture and then what happens is that this rotor this tip closes this area and eventually it pushes you can see the video right over here it pushes out and eventually there will be like a uh, exhaust port right over here i couldn't draw it but yeah that's the ex uh, exhaust port located right over there so this point will push this area push as much as possible and then it will make it go out that's it combustion process is over it's very simple okay the intake it pulls in when the tip passes this area it just acts like a vacuum and pulls in okay and then it closes by the other tip and during that it compresses here because of this oddly shaped thing oddly shaped thing it creates a compression so it closes the area it reduces the area it isn't volumetrically open like this so it makes the compression process happen after the compression process it closes more such that the spark plug can ignite and create a combustion process and give power to that that's the power shock and make the rotor push on that's it combustion process is over it's very simple guys as i'm explaining in the whiteboard doesn't mean it's fully like uh, in depth so it might confuse you technical don't worry guys if there is any doubt please enter in the comment section i every day try and like i'm watching the comment section whenever i eat breakfast or lunch and dinner i am thinking in the comment section there might be doubts when i check the there is no comments I'm like shocked. Why aren't people getting comments? Why don't you guys watch my videos? What's the trouble? Like I know only some amount of them watch it. Why guys? You can watch my videos. Consider subscribing. That's all I'm asking. Just watch these videos. Just 10 minutes or 20 minutes video. That's all. In class they take about 40 minutes or one hour. That's it. Just 20 minute class. That's all I'm asking you. Just watch 20 minutes of my videos. Then go into Google and search. You can do that. But 
I, I would request you to watch just one of my videos for uh, this concept or if you want to uh, take in one spe uh, one particular concept about an engine, for example, the type of fuel injectors, I didn't still make a video, but if someone who definitely wants it, just uh, text me in my mail, okay, just uh, like my mail address is uh, given in the description or if you don't know, it's Tarun Sattvik Engineer, 123 at gmail.com, you can mail it to my address and then I will uh, watch that and see what have you written and is there something you want and I will make it, see guys, you just ask me, I'm like your friend, just think me, I'm a car guy and you're a car guy, we are all a community, okay, we all make the better of cars after the day. Like when I'm going to become big, I'm going to change car. Like I'm not going to change car in the form of electric. I don't like electric especially, but I'm not saying electrics are waste. But you know, the feeling of driving a mechanical car, I'll explain in the end of the video. First, we study this, okay? That's important. So yeah, that's all the combustion process and it's over. See, we completed the intake, combustion, ignition and exhaust. All the things are being accepted by this one. Over. And then one more thing we want to know about this rotor. This is a triangulated rotor, but it's like circulated. Usually triangles are like this. They are skull in and uh, those types of uh, one, but this type of triangle, yeah. So, this type of triangle, guys. So, I just took my duster and rubbed this one, but no problem. So, if you can see this type of triangle, they have a cavity in them. So, this is the photo of a cavity. Why is to take in space during the combustion process? Like I said before, like the combustion process, it has to ignite. There isn't so much space, or what happens, it might lead to uh, a leak or sometimes might cause it to explode. So, to reduce that, uh, things there's a cavity in them. And one more thing you want to know. There is an eccentric shaft. So eccentric in the form means that, example, this is the drive shaft, guys. This is how it looks, but I'll show you an image, no problem. And the lobes, these are lobes, or this is itself the crankshaft. It will be located right over here. See, this is the photo right over here, a proper photo for explaining you, the proper mechanical one. So yeah, it looks like this. This is the one which is attached to the rotors by a fixed bearing. It's a crank journal. A crank journal is a precision ground surface which is a rotating pivot for example for a piston to connect to the connecting rod for therefore here it's a ball bearing to connect to the rotors that's it because the rotors are oddly shaped you know when triangle spins normally in one area like one particular thing what happens it just it, it has some movement like it is not stable like circle if you just move keep it moving in a fixed point it will but triangle it starts to like move here it just disagents itself so that's why there's a low because of its uh, ovenly placed that one so the drive shaft is connected to the this one the eccentric shaft is also known as the e shaft that's it so the e shaft is directly connected to the rotors and let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages let's move on guys and one more thing you want to know is that these uh, holes why there are so much is that how do you think coolant enters this type of engine for a regular car engine you know uh, i think i hope you know guys but let's make a video more on the future yeah so this type of holes where the coolant enters, okay? So the coolant enters this area. So this type of holes are known as coolant jackets. J A C K E T S jackets, okay? So those these are the areas where the coolant enters, like in these holes, and they are known as the coolant jackets. So this is how coolant enters, and that's it. So that's all we want to know in those areas, and especially that's all. And there are two spark plugs to ignite it, and over eccentric shaft and drive shaft. That's all. And one thing you want to know is that if the rotor spin one time alone, the E shaft or the drive shaft itself will rotate three times. So that's how they create this higher RPM. Take a load right over here. And that's one more thing is that, the, uh, the, let's talk about that in advantage. So let's move on guys. That, now let's move on to the advantages and disadvantages. So the first thing is uh, the slow. Why it is slow? Like I said before, the rotor spins only once that the drive shaft or the E shaft spins thrice. So the gearing is higher, like what to say, it's uh, great. And one more thing you want to know how is torque created here when the rotor is connected directly to the E shaft by those uh, crank journals and everything that creates a torque when supplying power it creates a contact that's how it's supplied okay it's from straight to there that's it torque is equal to force multiplied by distance the rotor spins only once that's the eccentric shaft or the E shaft spins thrice so that's how and it creates this unique sound <laughs> makes much more better and then smoother and one why is it smoother and the reason towards this is that this moves in only one particular direction okay uh, one particular direction what I mean is that the rotor spins in only one direction that's why and if you see normal pistons what happens example this is a piston take it like this guys connecting rod and then there's a crankshaft right over here hope you can see this I think the board has been blurred okay for example this is a piston okay just take this as a piston connecting rods crankshaft yeah 
what happens is that the piston moves up and down which creates a reciprocating mass and the reciprocating mass is created when when you push down just like this for example take your arm take in the topmost position as much as possible how much ever you can and push it down immediately you 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 feel a bit of force at your ear that force is what makes it move up and down if you can see that's why the engines in a car they move slightly for example take a look at the video right over here the c8 engine slightly imbalances itself or shakes during acceleration because of immediate power and that's why and that's why the reciprocating mass is being created but if you want to cancel it if the why is it created even you know the piston moves up and down and why is the crankshaft used even crankshaft is what turns translatory motion into circular motion because your cars uh, go in circular not in up and down or it will be bungee jumping so hope you understand about that and that's why a crankshaft has been used same thing right over here when it rotates at one direction alone or like only it rotates and it's easy to transfer that motion into crankshaft without um, what to say like uh, when there's a uh, reciprocating mass up and down it's much more smoother and it's not creating any more imbalanceation in the engine itself so it's much more better and one thing you want to know there is no uh, single rotor engines there might be single piston engines for bikes single rotor uh, engines are in there there will be two rotors generally and if you can see in this video for example i took from donut media because i'm sorry i'm not great editor yeah, if you can see in the video itself the rotor the second rotor if for example the first rotor is starting the combustion process the second rotor is about to start the combustion process. let's say it's about 0.5 seconds slower to start the process that's it over and then if you move on it's less moving parts because there is only the rotors itself for example two rotors is the basic thing so two rotors and then the e-shaft that's it only three moving parts there's no lifters there's no camshaft there is no nothing like a, a regular piston engine so it reduces all those force and there's less moving parts so therefore what reduce maintenance but there is maintenance in this one it's great because of one reason and that's all guys so less moving parts and so lesser things and yeah Overall, it's a good engine and good designation. So, and one more thing you want to know why I wrote Wankel here because Felix Wankel is the designer for this type of engine or he is the inventor for this type of engine. So, that's why people call him as a Wankel or the rotor engine is also known as a Wankel engine, another name, okay? Synonym for the engine, that's it. And let's move on to the disadvantages. Here comes the bad news. And the disadvantages because low thermal efficiency. And you see that normally in a combustion engine, there is a volume, like it's a cylinder and the combustion happens equally in an area. So, uh, so equal amount of thermal, like the heat has been produced equally and the engine has equal heat. But if you can see here, like I divided right over here, if you can see this side alone, I just draw it with the green one. Yeah, it's very bad. But yeah, if you can see this green part alone, for example, okay, I take a proper crank, Okay, I'll take a proper rotor engine and cut it. So, boom, I cut it down. So, if you can see this part of the photo, this is a real engine photo. If you can see half alone, that side is where the combustion is happening. If you can see that, that side is alone getting more heat. That means the more heat has been supplied, the low thermal for here. So, this part remains cool, but this one remains hotter. For example, here is a video, like there's a photo here. Engineering explained, he's a great guy. He's Jason. Uh, I think he's Jason, I think. So, yeah, he, from engineering explained. And uh, I, I couldn't make a 3D model. I'm sorry. So, here's the photo. If you can see in the video, when he shows the rotor engines, if you can see one part is much more blacker because of combustion happens. And the other part of the area is white or like clean. And the reason because of this is that the combustion process is most likely happening from here to here. So heat is only supplied mostly here and these areas are done. So that's why. So that's why low thermal efficiency, low compression rate because there's only compression happening from here to here. Or I'll show you this video. If you can see in that part of the video, only a little bit of space and you can't uh, adjust it so much. You can't change it. So it's bad. Low compression ratio. It's really bad. They have to do something. But that's a great thing also. But somehow and the reason because of this and that's why uh, like one more thing you want to know in the exhaust port. Sometimes you can see uh, the rotor engines, like for example, this RX1, take a look here, and burst flames. It, it shows flames from the exhaust. Why? Because some amount of the fuel is been let out, and because of heat, it creates all those ex massive explosion of fire. And that's why, and it's bad. We'll talk about that more. And then it's difficult to uh, pass, and it's difficult to pass smog, smog for the smog test, which tests your uh, MOT, MOT is full for everything safety, but smog test is checks the cars, um, what to say the exhaust gas is whether it's under regulations or something like it's just that checking whether the regulations are being proceeded or being obliged by the car so it's bad because of because the engine what is bad about this is that if you can see there if you see uh, intake process here combustion here exhaust here how do you think in a regular piston 
they have these spaces in them to properly let it out but this is one how do you think it will manage it because of seals they this rotor depends upon this area this tip and there will be seals here take a look at this video when they assemble a seal yeah if you can see those seals there what do you think these seals go bad sometimes and to reduce the friction yes because if the seal is directly in contact with the another metal metal and metal when they contact they cause friction over time friction and friction what happens is that they reduce the size of the metal that's how your brake pads reduce because metal and metal cause uh, reduction that's how see and there is an engine oil being coming here and because of that there is another problem engine oil is directly supplied so the engine oil has also been burned and sent out because of that that is also a difficulty to pass smog and one more thing is that the fuel isn't completely burned and some amount of them are going so engine oil and then the fuel all those things going out it's basically it's bad for the environment it pollutes it that's why rotary engines are uh, is hard to pass these smog tests and that's why most of the manufacturers aren't making it that's the reason guys if you can see that's why and that's it that's the main reason that's why it's difficult to pass smoke seals go bad those seals which is said about no that's called as the apex seals i'm sorry it's a bad handwriting so those are the apex seals here's the photo of them so the apex seals go bad if they aren't taken uh, proper care and that's it that's how they go bad and it's really bad for the environment and same thing so that's all guys for the rotary engine and the last part comes here the uh, the progress for the race car build. So the race car build is going really well. I talked to a few companies like Willwood for brakes. You know, I want some performance brakes. Um, yeah, I talked to Willwood for brakes and um, I talked to Willwood for brakes. And I'm, I thought about working with VF Engineering last time I said because they couldn't make the specific turbocharger for the engine. And yeah, it's been bad time, but I got some good news also. I have chatted with Craftsman Tools and you know, I want some tools. Yeah, I don't have great tools, but yeah, I have some tools. So yeah, I talked to Craftsman and it's working very well. Tools will be coming and then moving on. Tank tools, I asked them for just some high-end talk tools. Yeah, they didn't still reply anything. Miller Miller Electrics for welders, I have talked to them. And then moving on, um, who did I talk with? Ricardo for seats and uh, I'm racing in Formula V and I'm uh, thinking about going to Formula 1000 also. So it depends, guys. So if you can see, I'm not going the best. So I thought keeping the expenses down and when I progress more and more and let's say more money and uh, from how much of a youtube account if i want to get money guys if you want to help me please consider subscribing that's all i'm asking and then let's move on if subscribers increase monetization increases then let's make carbon fiber and you know let's move on let's uh, proceed let's uh, the channel is improving that's it so the race car build is going very well and i am talking to honda for engines because i'm thinking honda is best for vtech engine because vtech is great you know the power supply engine and it's great so i'm thinking to move with honda for the engines and I'm asking them currently for their four cylinder. That's enough. Uh, around, I'll get about 110 horsepower and uh, to tune it, I'll get about 190, 200. I'm sure about that one. So, Honda, I'm moving on with them. And then, let's, then what am I missing on? Tubes and those types of things, I can buy them self, myself. And then, what are we missing then, guys? Yeah, that's what I'm asking for. Then, then what sponsors have I asked for? Miller Electrics for Builders, yes. And then, I'm currently working with some more, like, uh, what do you say, like, uh, I'm working with some more uh, sponsors to ask them and let's see what they're saying and hope this race car bill goes well and guys it will take time two or three more months we'll, I think we'll start by October or September I think we can start this bill by November or December some it takes time guys it's not an easy process to do this very easily it will take time but I'm sure we can do this one and please stay with me and I'll see you guys in the next week's video and I'm so happy that you watched this video and I'll see you next time around peace